Welcome to this video on finding a journal and the publishing process. This is part of our series on publishing a research article. Let's begin by looking at how to go about selecting a journal. There are two ways to do this. One is to write the paper and then find a journal afterwards or to choose a journal and write the paper for the journal. And I would suggest number two because even though your research is independent of the journal, once you have a journal audience in mind, you can craft that paper with that audience in mind. It's much harder to find a journal that suits your paper um, when you write the paper first. And I would suggest that you choose three possible journals. If the paper gets rejected from the first one, you can move on to the next one. Rejection is part of this game, but um, you will need to shape it for that new journal as well. So how to find a journal? One of the most common ways of identifying a journal is to look at the papers you're reading and to make a list of the journals those papers are being published in. Uh, it makes sense that if, if you are reading papers from those journals, your research would fit into, into one of those particular publications. So do research on the journal, uh, look up the journal webpage, read the aims and scopes of the, of the journal. Journals often have templates and specific guidelines, so you can read this first and prepare your paper accordingly. And talk to people in your field. They may identify specific journals in your field that you should look to publishing. They may have other ideas. Here are some tips to match your paper to a journal. The first thing is to read the guidelines for authors very carefully and to follow exactly what they suggest. So if they say 6,000 word papers only, don't submit a paper of 6,005 words. Read papers in the journal, but read like a writer. You're looking for what counts as knowledge, what methodologies are valued in this journal, what counts as evidence. Can you cite articles from this journal so that you can show that you are continuing an academic conversation. Look at the language in the articles. How much jargon is allowed? How many abbreviations? Look at the different sections. How are they titled? What goes into each section? Look at the weighting of each section. Read introductions and conclusions and examine what authors have written. Analyze your audience. Is it an international audience? If yes, what do you need to explain to make your paper understandable to that audience? Most papers these days are submitted electronically through a journal's online portal system. And there are usually instructions that you'll need to follow. For example, you may be required to submit, submit a paper for blind review. And blind review means that the reviewers won't know who you as the author are. So this means removing all references to your, your name and any other author's name in the paper and in the reference list. So I usually create two documents. One is the final completed manuscript and then a copy where I remove the names of authors and replace it with the word author and I take out any university names or other identifying markers. In this way, when the reviewer's co comments come back, I can work on the first document without having to insert the names again. So once you've submitted the paper through the online submission process, you should be able to track the paper as it moves through the peer review process. Now, not all journals do this, but many do these days. The first step in the process is the editor's decision. The editor will decide whether the journal requirements have been met and whether the article meets the aims and scope of the journal. If the editor decides no, then the author will be informed immediately. And editors usually reject papers if the authors didn't follow guidelines, which you can then fix up and resend, or if the paper doesn't suit the journal. If the editor decides yes, then the paper is sent out for review. And what editors are looking for is whether the paper is a good fit for the journal, whether the topic or approach is innovative and adds to current debates, 
or perhaps you're looking at a new issue, an old issue in a new way. And editors also look for really strong arguments and a fresh approach, you know, a new take on the literature, something a little different. The editor will invite experts to peer review the paper. Most journals use two reviewers, but some require three. Reviewers are sent an email with the abstract of the paper and they accept or decline the invitation to review. And it's here that a lot of time can be wasted as editors have to contact several rounds of reviewers. Once the reviewers have accepted the task to review, they have anywhere from between three to eight to 12 weeks to review depending on the journal. Reviewers then write a report according to journal specifications and they often have to fill out a set of questions on the online system. Reviewers advise the editor whether the editor should reject, revise or accept. And if the editor agrees with the reviewer's reports, then the author will be informed of this decision. Some journals have very high rates of rejection because they have so many submissions. So you, you, shouldn't be, um, you shouldn't worry too much about this because this is actually the name of the game. Very few papers are accepted without changes and most papers require revisions. And if I get a decision for a revision, that to me is a bonus. I'm very happy. So there are two types of revisions, minor revisions where the paper doesn't require further review and major revisions where the re revised paper will be sent back to the reviewers for re-evaluation. And you might even get major revisions where you have to resubmit the paper as a new paper. So what reviewers are looking for is attention to detail, coherence between the research problem, the methodology, the research design, and consistent results with the rest of the study. Editors will also reject a paper if they feel the so what question is unanswered. And this is the rationale for the study, the need for the study. Most journals ask authors to provide a written account for the editor showing the changes that they've made. There may be several rounds of revisions before the final decision is to accept. This, this is not uncommon and it's not a reflection of your paper. Once the paper has been accepted, it moves into a production process. And, you know, in the weeks that come, then you might be asked to do, you know, check the copy, copy editing to answer some queries about referencing and the final proofing. Then finally, the paper is published. And this is where you want to celebrate because a lot of work has gone into this and you want to enjoy finally achieving publication. We've provided quite a few references here for you on the publication process as a whole. So if you need to pause the video and have a look at them in more detail. Thank you for watching this video on finding a journal and the publishing process which is part of our series on publishing a research article.